This is Proverbs 11 and 2. Bring it on. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. So when pride cometh, when pride comes, then shame comes. Because when you're prideful, the Lord gives you onto, gives you onto shame. Because if we continue to be prideful, we're not really putting our mind on him. We're That's putting right. our mind on what we've obtained in this earth. Come on. So we have to, we can't be prideful. We have to stay, read the last part for me again. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. But when we're in the lower state, when we don't have much, comes wisdom. Because what? We put our trust in the Lord. We don't put our trust in earthly riches. We don't put our trust in money to gain more money. And in the stock market, we put our trust in the Lord. Put, bring out your precept. Proverbs 20 verse 1 Wisdom cries without uh, cries without she utter her voice in the street So like we brought that out before wisdom cries in the streets and that's why we're out here to bring wisdom onto the lost and onto the people that don't know who they are because our people walk through up and down in the earth and they think we're in an okay position, but you're not. You're the first hired, for last hired, last fired, first fired, so lucky I, and you have the worst job. So how is that a good state to be in? That's not a good state to be in. And that's because we're under the curses. Bring out your piece. This book of Psalms, chapter 37, and verse number 30. Lord. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. And his tongue target of judgment. The law of his Yahweh is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. So the the wise has keeps his heart in the laws of God. The wise thinks of the Lord's wisdom. And, right. and not of the Lord's wisdom, but thinks of God and continues to keep the commandments and do what's right. That's right. And doesn't go on to the lowly and things that aren't of profit because it may be of profit of this world but in the long run is it really going to profit you when because everyone has to sit in the seat of judgment yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 4 verse 7 Wisdom is the principal thing Therefore get wisdom And with all that Getting Get understanding Because wisdom is a principal thing The Lord says So with wisdom We can get knowledge and understanding Because that's why As I said we have to take up the book and read We have to read these words So we can get that wisdom so that we can apply it onto our lives and get knowledge from it and then bring it out to, onto our brothers and sisters that are lost so that's why it says wisdom is a principal thing and also wisdom is what separates us from the Christian churches because the Christian church don't come from the scripture it comes from out of pastor talking for a couple hours off of his own vain knowledge and own vain opinion bring out your precept Psalms 118 and verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So, get me down my 17 18. It's better to put our trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Because man is the one that makes you go off. Man is the one that gives you certain things to prohibit you from serving the Lord. Like how you have to have to go to a job nine to five what time do you really have when you come back have to serve the household but that's because we're under oppression but not saying it's impossible because it is possible to continue to serve the lord whilst we're in this captivity but with man it's impossible and his words aren't of good Bring out your peace. 
bring out what I told you. This book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. This book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So, this book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 5. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man and make it flesh his arm. So cursed be the man that puts his trust in these in men, which is in these governments, in these organizations, in the benefit system, and in in man that in the long run isn't gonna profit him. That's because right. of course you need money to live, but the benefit system isn't the be all and end all. Because if you do certain things wrong, the government can take it away like that. And I've heard of people that have fraudulently got benefits and they have taken millions out of the government's budget. So we can't put our trust in man. We have to put our trust in the Lord. And his heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but so, shall inhabit the posh places in the wilderness. So this is an analogy. If you put your trust in man, there's literally going to be no salvation because you're going to be in a hot place and in a hot place where there's no sun, I mean no shadow and if there's no shadow for you to to um, go under you'll get dehydrated and die That's right. so it's, it's analogy saying that you can't continue to leech onto a guy and tr put your trust in man you have to put your trust in the Lord well you had a precept this is Proverbs 24 and 1. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for their heart study of destruction and their lips talk of mischief. So be not envious to be with evil men. So don't want to be with evil men because their hearts, their minds study destruction and things and how to befall you and, and things how to befall our brothers and sisters. So don't be even though they've got some nice things, don't be envious to be with them. That's right. Because what they have isn't anything to what's, to what's coming and to what will come if you're of the nation of Israel. Get me um, Proverbs. Get me Proverbs. Get me Proverbs 18 and verse 1. Proverbs 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself separated himself seeketh and under meddleth with all wisdom and intermeddleth with all wisdom 18 18 read it read it proverbs 18 and verse 1 through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. So we, if you separate yourself from Yahweh, if you're an Israelite, you're going to seek after the philosophies of this world. Read on. A fool have no delight in understanding. So a fool doesn't have any under, delight in any of God's understanding or in any of the Bible and what the Bible says because he's a fool. He, won't, he, he doesn't, he doesn't want to listen basically. Read on. But that his heart may discover itself. But when, his mind is going to discover itself. Read on. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt, and with ignominy, ignominy reproach. So with the wicked comes contempt, and things that are of tribulation, and things that, are, that, that don't profit us. Read on. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. So the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. Just, it can make you drown, the words of man's mouth. And it's also talking about how much you use your mouth. Read on. And the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. But a man's mouth is a deep ditch and a deep ditch filled with water. But wisdom is something that flows something that continues to be like a river and is peaceful read on it is not good to accept the person of the wicked 
to overthrow the righteous in judgment. So it's not good to overthrow the righteous that are doing well, but to do wickedness. Have you read that? A fool's lip enter into contention, and his mouth calling for struggles. So a fool's lips continues into contention, and a man's mouth gets him strokes because if you do if you use your mouth for wrongdoings you're going to get beaten or you're going to get whatever punishments coming you coming towards you if you use it for wrong but if you use it for right and righteousness you'll get the goodness out of it verse 7 a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul so a fool's mouth is his destruction the fool's mouth is the what is the thing that leads him into certain things, certain tribulation, certain, con and, and gives him bad consequences off of it. So that's why we have to think before we speak and continue to do what's right. This, this book of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 28. Even a fool when he holds his peace is counted wise. So when a fool, even when a fool count, holds his peace and it stays silent, People think, oh, that man's wise, you know, because he doesn't use his mouth much. But read on. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So the person that shuts his lips, doesn't talk much, is counted as a man of understanding. Ecclesiasticus 4, verse 28. Strive, strive for the truth until death. And the Lord shall fight for you, so, for thee. So if we strive to the truth until death, the Lord will fight for us. Because if we continue to do what's right, if we continue to keep his commandments, pray and fast, he will fight for us. So we have to strive for it until death. Because just like Amashiach Yawashai gave himself for us, we have to replicate that in continuing to keep his commandments and do what's right. That's right. Jeez. He has a precept. I know you. Get me Proverbs 15 and verse 4. It says, Sirach chapter 32, verse 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. So, speak, young man, when thou has when your when the mouth is so lucky so it says speak young man when it's prohibited for you to speak so don't just run off your mouth for running off your mouth's sake speak when it's when it's ready to be spoken unto thee and read the last part for me again brother it says and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked and if you ask twice you you, you be scared when you're asked twice to say what you said. It's like when your parents tell you, when your parents say to you, did, did you really just say that? And then you say it again. And then you get a beating for what you said because they asked you twice. So when someone asks you to say what you said twice, be scared of it. Get me Proverbs 15 and verse 6. This book of Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. So a wholesome tongue gets to the tree of life and will utter these words and will say these words in truth and in sincerity. But read the last part for me. But per perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. But perverseness, if we to use our tongue to speak perverseness, is a breach in the spirit. So it doesn't give us a good spirit. It, gi it gives us onto a devil's spirit. That's right. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosoms of fools. So don't be in your spirit angry quickly. Because anger resteth in the bosom of fools. That's right. Because when we get angry quickly, it's like it's like we're just being angry for being angry sake. And we can't just be angry for being angry sake, can we? 
That's why it's ideal for us to be rational. Because Yahabashai wasn't wasn't angry for just being angry. He was anger in righteousness and he was an austere man. Please. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. So, you're from Jamaica, yeah? yeah Do you know what Jamaica means? Yeah. Jamaica means a land of wood and water, yeah, yeah. right? And that's not your biblical nationality, because you can't find Jamaica in the Book of Life, which is the Bible, can you? That's right. So, can I give you a biblical nationality? Okay. All right. Get me Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. Get me Deuteronomy 14 and verse 2. Get me Leviticus 20 and verse 26. Get me Leviticus... Uh, yeah, but anyway, read that. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the Lord sees you as a holy people and get me get me Leviticus 20 and 26 just to establish what holy means. This is book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me for I the Lord am holy and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. So the Lord says that we should be holy unto him because he is severed and severed, just like how you have a sieve and you sieve out the impurities that you don't want. He is separate. He has a separate nation unto himself to be his. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So you are a separate people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth so this is the thing that the lord was gave unto us to be a special people unto himself to be above all nations that are upon the face of the earth That's right. so you would be an israelite according to the bible get me deuteronomy 14 and verse 2 but there's certain things that we didn't do why we're in the situation that we're in now and why we're called black man Jamaican, Black British, Black American, Afro-American, and all of these words that they give us. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord have chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. So again, that's how the Lord saw us and sees us still now, even though we're under captivity. Get me due to uh, Judith chapter 5 and verse 17 in our Bible. Bring it, bring it Book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ox his master's crib. But Israel do not know, my people do not consider. So the ox knows his owner, so the ox is... Um, a dumb animal and the ass is master's crew so if you if you say ask go to wherever i want it to go to and beat it and get the donkey to go it will go to the p place where you want it to go right so the ox knows its owner and the ass is master's crew but it says that israel doesn't know because we, we didn't know that we were the chosen people of god which are the israelites we thought we were just black people but how can black people do so many things that other nations can't do because we are the ones that basically built all of England's infrastructure. No lie. So it's showing you that the, the black people are a special nation. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are a special people unto the Lord. Please, sir. Bring, bring the please, sir. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So, um, all right, start from 15 and then jump to that. Because this is the curses that are in the book, in the Bible. And we'll show you how these curses match up to our nation. Read it. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass 
if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. to observe to do all his commandments so, and his statutes. So if we don't listen, Amen. hearken is another word for listen. If we don't listen unto the voice of the Lord and to follow his commandments yeah, and his know. statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And is curse a good thing or a bad thing? Okay. Generational curse. Yeah. Curse shall not be in the city, and curse shall not be in the field. So how are so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans treated in the city? Are they in a good state or a bad state? Exactly, as a majority we're in a bad state. And when it says curse shall thou be in the field, that's when we're in slavery. And that's when we're being slaved by the slave master. Jump down to what, where you read. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. And do you remember what it said at the beginning when I said, these curses should come upon thee. And it says, thou shalt become an astonishment a proverb and a byword. An astonishment is just like, how did these people fall from being such kings of the earth to now being bottom people and people that are scraps, last hired, first fired, to, and also a proverb is a dark saying, like nigger, jungle bunny, big lit, all of these words. And a byword is like black man. Read on. And a byword among all nations whether the Lord shall lead thee. And doesn't all these nations look down upon us when they see us? The Arab man, right? The Arab man looks down on you. The um, so-called white man looks down on you. All these nations look down on you. But they do it for a reason. Because these curses match you up. Get me Deuteronomy 28 and 54. Deuteronomy. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4 And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever See, so the Lord said that we are going to discontinue from our heritage in Jeremiah It says that we're going to discontinue from our heritage and discontinuing from our heritage is discontinuing from our God-given nationality. So that's why we're given black nowadays. And we, and we, we think we're a colour in a crown. Black isn't even a colour, it's a shade. Precept. So, and it says that we're going to be discontinuing from our heritage. And we weren't going to really consider it. Bring up the precept. I would like to follow up with that. Yeah, but there's... there's Two things that I need to teach you before you leave. Alright? Yeah, yeah, sure. But there's two things that I need to teach you before you leave. And get me um, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Get me um, Leviticus 11 and verse 7. Yeah. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. Showing you that slavery is in the Bible and that transatlantic slave trade is in the Bible. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Get me Exodus 20 and 2. Egypt is another word for bondage. Read it. Exodus 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So, but Egypt is another word for bondage, and bondage is another word for slavery. Read on. Back Can I ask a question? Um, New Testament. Um, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. No. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt oh again totally with ships. By the way whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see no more again. So, the by the way whereof I spoke unto thee is when he spoke to us in Jerusalem. Because we were taken from out of Jerusalem. Read on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And who was sold for a hundred, a hundred and fifty, two hundred, two fifty, sold unto your, and, and what did they call them? Our enemies. Unto our enemies, for what? For bond men and bond women. For slave man and slave woman. And no man shall buy you. And buy is an old English word for redeem. 
So, who is the one set of people that were taken from the Jerusalem, even though you didn't really know that, or from the west coast of Africa, and sold into America, sold into Britain, sold into South America? There's, I only know one nation of people. Exactly. Showing you that you're, you're in the Bible. That's right. There's certain prophets that even claim that they're black. Get me Job 30 and 30. Get me Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Get me hang Jeremiah on, hang on, hang on. Job what? 30 and 30. Jeremiah 7, uh, uh, 14 well, what and about verse 2. Job, what about John, uh, John 3.16? We'll deal with that. Yeah, good. We'll deal with that one because that is amazing. That's exactly the Bible. Just, but I want you to stay. So you can find out. Job 30 and verse 30. Hang on, hang on. Job 30 what? And 30. Job 30 and 30, my skin is black upon me, and my bones are burnt with heat. Showing you that Job was a so-called black man, he said, my skin is black upon me. That's Showing you right. that he's a so-called black man. So why is it in the cartoons they put him in as a white man? Because in the Renaissance period, in 1453, that's when they went and whitewashed everything. Bring out your priest. Song of Solomon 1 and verse 5. Bring it out! I am black but comely. Wait, 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 wait. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Let things be done in decency and in order. The Leviticus laws of the Leviticus laws. Decency and in order. When you come to get, get me that scripture. When I when when I step into the foot of scripture into the house of the Lord, keep that mouth. Get me that scripture. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. So when, when, when you come into the house of the Lord, keep your foot, keep your mouth quiet. Because, because we're bringing out the scriptures, we're bringing out the scriptures, and we, can't, we have to deal with it one by one. We can't just. We can't just yeah, Let's but I'm, I'm, de I'm dealing with the scripture. I'm dealing with the scripture. I'm, I said I'll get on to you. I said I'll, I said I'll get on to you. I said I, I, I need to, to I need to teach my brothers love. and sisters first. Please be quiet because we're okay, trying. Be I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to teach our people how they're supposed to be. Keep thy foot when they're going to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. So be more ready to listen than to just run off your mouth. And that was my That's whole right. lesson. Right. So stop coming up and being like, la, 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 la. like, listen to what we have to say first before you run your mouth. And it says in the book, let everything be done in decency and in order. So everything has to be done one by one, not just blah, 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 blah. For they consider not that they do evil. So they consider that they don't do evil. That's what brother thought. He thought it was bringing. He, he thought it was someone bringing up John three sixteen. And I said I'm going to deal with it, and I'm going to deal with it. But let me teach people first, and then I'll get on to you. But then you can teach up just John three sixteen. Get me wisdom of Solomon one and five. So he loved the world that he gave his life. Yeah, that's it. This is Song of Solomon one and five. Bring it out! I am black, but comely, O oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. So even Solomon said, I'm a black man and comely. So I'm black and beautiful, that's where we get the saying from. Show, showing you that these people colonized our colonized us and and made us believe that these people were so called white people when they weren't. They were actually of our nation. Teacher Bring up the precept. Book of Isaiah forty nine and verse seven. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his holy one. To whom man despises it, to whom the nation abhor it, to serve the servant of rulers, king shall see arise, prince also shall worship, because the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. So the Lord has chosen Israel, that's why he doesn't deal with all these other nations, he has chosen Israel. That's why in the book, in the Bible, it talks about Israel so much. Because the Lord only deals with Israel, he doesn't deal with everybody. That's what people fail to understand. That's right. Because if the Lord did deal with everyone, why didn't everyone go in the slave ships? Showing you that the Lord only deals with one nation of people. And that's what people fail to comprehend. As the people are the people that are hated on the most in the world. Joel 2 and verse 27 
and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed so he's saying that I'm in the midst of Israel and he shall be our God and his people aren't going to be ashamed because you're not going to be ashamed when you have Yahweh who this world even equals God with you are you because if you're given if you have God with you you're going to be happy that's right Bring the priest. This is Isaiah 43 and verse 21. Bring it up. This people have I formed for myself. I they, are, they shall shew forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. So this people, which is the nation of Israel, which is the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, he formed for himself. That's right. Showing you as a special people. That's, That's why I read on to you Deuteronomy 7 and 6 at the beginning. Showing you that you're a special people, not just a black man. Amos 3 and verse 1. Bring it up. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So, the Lord says, you only, again, giving you another scripture that says, the Lord only dwells in Israel. You only have I known. And he's going to punish us for our iniquities because... Like I read in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15, we were under curse when we didn't follow after the Lord's commandments. That's right. So that's iniquity. Psalms 147 and verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. So he has dwelt with Jacob and as for the other nations they don't know the Lord's judgments because if they knew the Lord's judgments then they'll be keeping the commandments with us but they're not keeping the commandments so let me give you a few commandments Deuteronomy 22 and 5 and I said Leviticus 11 and 7 uh, Leviticus 21 and verse 5 too quick I've got to go and bring up the next people Leviticus 11 and verse 7 and the swine, though he divided the hoof. So do you know what the swine is? What's the swine? Okay. And be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cut. He's unclean to you. So the swine, even though it has attributes like a clean animal and has a cloven foot like a cow does, it's unclean unto you. Because the pig eats poo, it's its own children and dead humans and dead animals, anything that's dead it will eat. Really. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. So we can't even go, we're in the supermarket, we can't even touch the pork. They are unclean to you. It's unclean unto us. Right. It's, it's something that's nasty, and it's sinful. Read on. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever has fins and scales. So what has fins and scales in the waters we could eat? Things like um, things like snapper we could eat. Uh, all these all these things we could eat that has fin that has both fins and scales. But things that don't have fins and scales, crab, shrimp, lobster, we can't eat because they're bottom feeders. Mackerel we can't eat because I know uh, uh, the um, so the so-called Jamaicans love their mackerel but don't have fins and scales so we can't eat it but yeah exactly and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers and all that move within the water and of any living things which are in the waters they shall be an abomination unto you so it's something that the lord hates but i'm going to get another speaker up to teach you and I'm going to sign off. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't talk. You've got glasses. Anyway, Shalom. Yeah. And I say, Brokatai Hawa, Brokatai Oshai. Brokatai Hawa, Brokatai Oshai. I'm Vajwala. Shalom. Kwa Nesharala. Kwa Nesharala.